Welcome to part two of the Interior Design Institute's module four space planning module. In this video, we will be going straight into using SketchUp Free to draw your floor plan. Let's go. So thanks for coming over from part one. When I initially filmed this tutorial, I didn't realize it was going to be such a long video so i split it into two so you would have noticed that in part one um the intro was completely for the idea that it would be one single video so if you watch part one part one would have shown you what key things you would need to take from the module to keep in mind for when you do do your drawing i showed you a quick tutorial of SketchUp with just the key tools that we would be using to do the floor plan with a little bit of a demo. And I briefly showed you how you can space plan using the PDF that Interior Design Institute provided. But I also um, provided other ideas like you could either use post-it notes or you could just draw it by hand. All of that stuff you need to have done prior to doing your floor plan. So make sure you have your selected space plan done with or the bubble drawings or whatever it is that you have just make sure you know what floor plan you want to do and then that will help you in this video when we actually do the floor plan so make sure you have your sketchup login and your space plan draft and we'll get straight into drawing the floor plan now in sketchup free let's go So once you sign in, you've got your dashboard, go to your products, your apps, and sketch up here. And then click launch. Create new. Um, you can click on this arrow and you can select how you want to do your drawing. So always, for people in Australia, always select millimetres. All construction drawings are in millimetres. All engineering drawings are in millimetres. So select decimal millimetres. If you're another country, choose, it, choose inches or feet and inches. So here's our guy here. He gives us this perspective of if there was a normal human standing inside our room. So here we've got our axes. We've got the blue, green, and red, which is axes X, Y, and Z. Um, but just make sure that when you draw on your planes, particularly for this one, we're drawing on the green and the red axes. So we're gonna be drawing on the X and the Y axes. Z is, you know, like your floor to ceiling, which is the third dimension. So we're only drawing on the X and Y axes, which are these green and red ones here. We always start at the datum point here, which is zero, where they all intersect. So looking at our drawing here, we need to draw a square that is 9600 wide on from the outside wall to the outside wall don't get confused because you might want to draw from the inside wall to the inside wall don't do that so we're drawing 9600 by 9100 and if we get it wrong it's okay we can just delete and start again because this is just the easy part we're just drawing a relative square so 9600 by 9100 so we're going to go over here to rectangle click it's definitely on the rectangle and you can see the origin it snaps to it so we're going to click on the origin point and then down here in this bottom corner see dimensions so you've got the x and the y so the x is usually that horizontal part but when i draw i tend to get confused so we're just going to experiment to make sure we get it right so we're it, we're going 9600 and you can type it into the dimension box. I haven't clicked out. So 9600 by 91, whoops, 100. So we can see down here it changing. So I'll type again 9600 space 9100. Okay. So 
So we want to look at this from the plan view. So looking at it from the top. So I'm going to go over to those right hand side here. And I am going to click on here, scenes. And then we we're going to click this middle um, house here because you can see we're looking straight at the roof. So we can look at it as a plan view. So we can see this is our square, which looks like that base drawing that we had. Now we're going to make sure that we drew the right dimensions. So we want to make sure that the X axis, the bottom axis is um, 9600. So we're going over to the menu on the left, see how it's got tape measure, and we're going to tape measure. So click this endpoint, see the endpoint 000, that's the datum, and we go to the other end, 9600. Beautiful. So it's in the right frame. And then this point to here is 9100. Excellent. So good start to start with. Now we know that the external walls are 300 and five millimeters wide. Yeah, external wall thickness 305 millimeters. So what we're going to do, we're now going to go to this menu, push pull, click on it, and then see it's got three options, one, two, three. We're going to go to this offset option here, and we're going to click on the edge, on edge, come in and we're going to type 305 for 305 millimeters and we can see again in this look in this distance here in the bottom left hand corner when I type 305 it will change and now I click enter and now all these walls are 305 millimeters wide let's test that again make sure you trust me so click from here to here, 305 millimeters. Excellent. And we can also test the vertical one walls as well. 305 millimeters. Woo. Okay, easy. Now we've got our external walls done. Now we're going to draw our staircase. So see these measurements are from the internal wall, which is why it's really important we draw the external wall first. So I am going to um, set these dimensions up so we can get to the right place. So I've got two screens, so I'm moving this to another screen. We've got our two, we've got our sketch up here. So we've got SketchUp here on the right, and this on the left is the PDF, which is our base drawing from our assignment. So now we're going to draw the stairs so we can see both. Okay, so uh, let's do a bunch of measurements. So we want 285, so I'm going to type, sorry, 2895, and it puts a mark point here. Then from there, we want to make another point, 2300, done. So this is where this corner of the stair begins. And then um, we can then draw the, uh, mark the rest of the points. So we can draw this wall first. So we want 2375 for the stairs part and then 1750 for the room and there from the ex the outside wall to the outside wall so 1750 so it will snap so even if you go off it will snap when it becomes vertical so 1750 all right cool so this part here is the stairs and this part here is the room so now we've marked out the points for our stairwell. We've got the distance from the internal walls and then we've got um, the size of it. So we've got our rectangle now. We're going to start at this bottom point here and all the way up here, this guide point. And when I look in the dimensions box, it says 4175. Uh, 4125. 
I want to go type in 41, oops, 41.25 by 200 because that's the width of the wall. Let's try again. 41.25. Always keep your eye on the dimension box. 200 equals. Awesome. So we can test that. Snap, 41.25, and that's 200. Awesome. Okay, that's done. So this next part is to draw the rest of these walls because they're structural. They're the most important walls that we have to keep. We can't move them. So we've got 13.50 from the inside of this wall. So let's mark that. 1350 and then we've got this 1750 here so that's easy so we've got this I would click on this guide point here because we've marked that as the external wall already and just go to here easy and then remember we went to offset so go to this tool here offset and then here offset so I'm going to just hover over the edge and we know this wall is 90 mils. So I just type 90, click, easy. Now this section here isn't the same, so we can delete this. Uh -uh. So we go to eraser and we'll delete this line here. And then we can draw here. So to scroll in, I'm just using the scroll bar on my mouse and then it snaps to the point and now I've extended that line. It snaps to that point and then I press escape to stop the drawing. Okay, now I'm going to use my eraser to delete this line and this line and we now have our wall. Easy. -da. Okay, so now we've got these stairs here. So I've seen different people give advice on the stairs. However, there is a standard for stairs. So what I do, I either go look on the internet and search for the standard for stairs, and then you draw them to that size. So let's go and search the stair size standard for now. But before we do that, we can just draw the out rest of these, the outline of these stairs here. So we can go here because we've got this here. It will snap and then snap to that endpoint there. Easy. Okay, so I just typed in stair standards. It came up with an Australian thing at the very top. So we can see this tread depth here. It says 185 mils. I think we'll go for 185 mils. So what I'm going to do now is mark the distances of the stairs. We know that the treads can be 185 mils. And there's a gap of 30 so it can be up to 8, 9, 10, 11, so 215. So yeah we could do that. So let's maybe make them 200 each just to make it easy. So we'll get our, um, our measuring tape and we'll go 200, 200, 200. So you click on the last dot and then click 200. There's probably an easier way to do this. Um, I can't figure it out. I remember that I learned like a special copy and move trick, but I couldn't figure it out just then. 
so if you know write it in the posts in the comments all right so they're 200 and now we're going to draw these lines they will snap okay so now we've got all our drawings i'm just going to clean up these uh, marker lines so if you go if you select by holding down the cursor and you go right it will select everything but if you uh, select from the left to the right it will only select some of the items so I'm going to do that for these markers here Okay, so we've done all of that. How awesome. So now you have your base. So I would suggest that on your rough copy, you would have figured out where you would have placed your rooms. So for example, on this base copy here that the IDI gave us, you could sketch up you know, where you want your rooms. So what I just spoke about is called space planning. So you could do it just sketching it out with a pencil. Okay, so we've sort of got our space planning here based on the brief that she gave. Uh, we've got our base floor plan here. So what we will do, we'll save this as a template because then you want to be able to have a, um, a clean slate to come back to for if you make mistakes. So let's save this um, into SketchUp. You can make a folder for it. So we'll call it module four is the folder, create. So we're in module four and now that's an empty thing. I'll put in the date, 2022, 12, 22. I'll put it in backwards because then it can stack it in chronological order. And then module four floor plan template. So this is just a template and it's going to stay in the template. Save here. Cool. Now we want to start drawing our floor plan. Saved. Cool. So now we want to start drawing our floor plan. We want to create a new copy of this template because we want to keep the template looking clean like this. So we go save as. So now we're creating a new project. SketchUp. Module 4. And then I'll put in the date again, 2022, 20, 12, 22. And then we go mod four, um, option one, floor, floor plan. And then if you hate it, you don't have to redraw the whole thing again. Just go back to your template. Save here. Okay. So this layout that I drew on here is actually the one that I handed in. Um, so we can work off that, which is fine. Lounge, dining and kitchen is pretty easy. Um, and study and toilet and laundry. So we want to start drawing walls and the walls are 200 mils. So maybe um, I'll draw a wall here. It's easy to create the rectangle. So we'll do that and we'll go to here. Another thing that is important is that there's this door here. So we have to make sure that that stays the same. Uh, so we should have put this on the template, but we can easily just add it now. So it's the external wall line is 40 to the door is four, whoops, 4191. Cool. So that's really important to be in the right place. So this is the front door. And then nine, 10 from here. So nine, 10, so that's that there. So snap, snap, cool. And then maybe just to make it clear it's a door, we can delete the, okay, so that's the door. Okay, so we've created this wall here for 
the possible study. We can now think about how we will section off the kitchen. So I will probably draw it because we've told me it has to be 200. So that's where the door entry is. So maybe, you know, it's natural to have something maybe 600. I'm just thinking that that's usually the width of a, a table or a console if I wanted to put one there. So let's see what that looks like. Mm. Yeah, let's just do that. So what's this? So let's make it to, so how much is it to here? It's 2300. So let's go. 200, uh, let's go 2,000, so 2 metres by 200. Cool. So now that's the start of our kitchen there. Okay, usual, a usual room is like about 3 metres. So let's do 3,300. Oops, did that mark anything? 33. Hundred. There it is. Okay. So that's pretty big. I want to go all the way to the wall because I want to maximize the space. So I'm looking at the dimensions box. I can see that the length of it is twenty-eight ninety-five. So I'll type twenty-eight ninety-five by 200. Cool. So that's our study. Um, I think I will make this WC into like an ensuite because then the study could also then work as a guest room with an ensuite as well. And that's really and that was one of the options. So you sort of giving them the WC as well as a guest room slash study. Um, so I'm gonna make it 900 wide cause that's like a nice size shower width. So 900. So from here to here. Um, so that's again. Two eight nine five two hundred. Okay, so that means that there'll be a shower here, maybe a toilet here, sliding door, sliding door, something like that, maybe. Um okay. Oh, and then we can have a laundry. So that's a pretty big laundry. Let's think. A bench top side is about six hundred in depth. 1200. That's 1200. What's this distance here? 400. Okay. And uh, this distance? 2490. That's with our measuring tape. Control select, control select, move. So I clicked M to move. I'm now grabbing this endpoint and moving them all down to this guideline. Yep, cool. All right, click. Delete this guideline, delete the guideline. Okay, so now we're going to draw doors. And let's get rid of these because these are all walls now. So as soon as you draw a line, it cuts into the other lines. So they become their own line. So looking at our module, 
Um, I think the best way to figure out the doors is to determine like what the requirements are for standard rooms. So seeing as this is a bathroom here, it's got all these requirements for where a toilet should be placed and where a shower should be placed. So I'm thinking I want my toilet or shower to be on one end and the toilet or shower lamp to be on the other end. So uh, I've deliberately made this 900 knowing that's a standard size for a shower. So we're going to make a, sh a standard shower that's 900 by 900. So let's um, bring this to 900. And then we can draw our shower like this. And I think, you know, with a shower, you can have a drain. So just quickly draw the shower like this. And then with the toilet, it says minimum width is 900 recommend a length between 900 and 1200. So let's see what 1200 looks like. So measuring tape, 1200, oh yeah, easy. And let's look at what 900 looks like. So that can be our toilet. And then I'm thinking a basin. So what's this distance? That's 10, that's 795. So, yeah, maybe we could have a 600 basin. So, um, a basin is about 600. Let's go 600 by 400. Let's use this. So we go 400, well oh, that's halfway in the thing, so maybe we need a small basin. Let's look for a small basin, small WC basin. Four hundred. Oh, it is 400. Actually no, that's 400 long. Two hundred, oh no, four hundred by two hundred, and it's got a cupboard. That's nice. Four hundred by two twenty. All right, so let's do that. So here, two twenty. There we go. So let's go. Rectangle and we'll go four hundred four hundred by two twenty. Beautiful. Awesome. Okay, so that means I can place my door here. I want it to be directly opposite the basin. So, um, and I want a sliding door to save space. So there's no swing. So standard door size, standard pocket door sizes. Okay, 620. So we've got a width of 620. Awesome. Okay, so 620. And then maybe we go from here. 
so 620 is 310 this side and then 310 this side and then I'll just draw the pocket door so that's one door 820 so I'm going to put it like here because I want space to be able to have like a cabinet, a cupboard for hanging stuff like storage and then so it's a swing door, that's a pocket door and then you can make this a cupboard, this is a big cupboard 600 by 1000 so this is a cupboard so a bench tops use about 600 Alright, so looking at this online, I haven't made much space, so we need to make this bigger. So standard washing machine is about 830 like in depth, and that's this line here, so there's not sp much space to actually put, like to stack, to put stuff in it, because <laughs> uh, you need to be able to bend in front of it. Um, so even if we have them stacked, it's still not enough space. So let's move this. Um, so let's go 600 from here. 600. And we'll move these. So I'm selecting M to move. It's asking me for my endpoint, which is going to be this. And I'm going to move it to here. Cool. And it's moved the other walls with it, which is really awesome. All right, so now we've got our bigger laundry, which is awesome. I'm going to move these guidelines here. We've got our laundry washer so let's put this back so 8 30 and then we've got our washer dryer which is 8 30 by 69 so we'll go 700 here from this wall 700 and then we can go 600 from here and then we've got a bench top and then we can draw this as our washer dryer And then we can delete these. Yes, got it. This way for here. All right. So Let's put the door pretty much in a similar spot then because then you can enter centrally. Then 
Maybe we'll have that as a pocket door as well. Uh, we'll go 30 centimeters. Yeah. All right, and this is where we're going to put our door, 800 door. And then Oh, that's right on the edge. Hmm. Let's make it a bit smaller then. Oh, you know, you can get a 620 door. Uh, standard door. Let's do it again. Yeah, 620. 720. Let's do 720. Easy. Cool. So, got that, that. Awesome. All right. Okay, so we've got our guest bedroom slash study. We need a dedicated computer space. So maybe we can draw that desk now. I like big desks. <laughs> Um, I've decided that I want windows on the front of the house because that's the entry door, so that's normal. So let's make our desk here. Um, I want, I like big desks, so it's going to be 900, also that's 900 as well, because the deeper it is, the more you can add space. Now let's do our kitchen. So let's make our kitchen bigger. Control, hold down, control, hold down. And then I'm going to click move. And I'm going to move this across. And we're going to move it across 400. So there's more space. Cool. Awesome. Why don't you delete? You delete? Yes, I deleted it. Woo, save. Okay, now we're going to draw the kitchen. So standard kitchen bench top. Bench depth. 600, yes. So it's going to do it 600. I want it to be a little bit luxury, so let's just make it 700. Whoops, is... 700 and then we'll make this 700 cool and then um, so I would make this you know that classic shape 
Um, so we'll make this the sink, that the stove top, and this the fridge here. Mm, for now. So we'll just start at the wall. Snap, snap, cool. And then I want to have an island and it's going to be massive um, because that's the dream, right? I'm starting from scratch. So to make our island, I want to find the midpoint of here, that's cool. And what's this space here? Two, three, nine, four. Oh, so maybe I don't have much space for an island. So maybe I can bring it out. So let's go 600 here. So people can walk around. Cool. All right, I'll select this and I want to move, so press M, click that midpoint and I want to move it to there. Hmm. That's massive. Let's have a look. Standard kitchen island. Okay, so I think this is my final layout for the kitchen. So I think we'll put like the fridge here and because you always want that triangle. So fridge, we'll put the sink in here and then the stove over here. And then you've got all of this bench top, um, which can also include oh, fridge here, fridge, pantry, stove top, sink. Anyway, something along those lines. Um, and then we need a door here. So I don't know what that's going to become. In my in the one that I did, I turned that into like a coffee station. So we could do that. Um, we'll make this like an informal living area, sitting room. Yeah, sitting room is a good term. We'll call this the lounge or living room. And then this will be the dining space here. Cool. Um, so now we're going to figure out where we want to put our windows. Um, I've decided I want this to be completely open, take advantage of the natural light. Um, so like French doors here from the lounge leading out. So that means if you're in the kitchen and you're doing the dishes or prepping or whatever, you can still see out like if the kids are playing outside and you can quickly run out there to catch them um maybe i'll do a built-in um thing here so you could put your tv on it um and maybe a fireplace it's a little bit like fancy and yeah i want built-in shelves so we can put them there too Cool, so first let's build this door. So we'll go 620, so 310. And then 620. Cool. 
can even make it an archway, which you can't tell. Let's do this. Cool. And it's going to be our coffee station. So this is pretty much it, our floor plan. Um, so in terms of furniture, you could just draw it freehand <laughs> like this. Um, however, I'm going to import some files which have all diff like different floor plans and within those floor plans, they have furniture. So if you would like to use this option, I use this option all the time. However, I paid for it. Um, I can put it up so you can also buy it from me to use within your drawing because it just makes things a lot easier and quicker. Once you have it once, you'll have it forever. Um, and I've used it through different versions of SketchUp. So I'm going to show you how to import how to import this file and then how we then um, explode it so we can use the individual furniture pieces, which includes the toilet, sinks, couches, dining tables, and whatever, even um, windows. So thanks for watching until the end of this video. Um, as you can see, I couldn't fit everything into one, but this video, the part two of module four, should be enough for you to be able to at least set up your base, create your rooms, and then the next one I'll show you how to put in the windows and the furniture. and. You should be done. I did this in one day, in only like a couple of hours. Um, so hopefully you can also get yours done in a day too. So see you in the next video.